Decentralized Science and NFTs. In today's video, we are going over an article that I found from the LCX team. Shout out Sage, I know you've been big on LCX recently. I think it's a worthwhile article to go over sort of the use case behind NFTs in decentralized science. If you are a fan of decentralized science or NFTs for that case, you're in the right spot. Go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe, make sure you turn on notifications because I go live Monday through Friday to trade crypto and talk about the crypto markets. Now let's get right into this. So understanding decentralized science and NFTs. It is an innovative form of scientific inquiry that does not rely on large centralized organizations. I know everyone's got a little, little excitement flowing through their veins right now. Rather, it employs blockchain technology in order to make science more transparent and equitable. People from every corner of the world can collaborate, rapidly share information, and ensure that the information is used appropriately. Even though this concept is novel, it has the potential to alter our ability to discover new scientific phenomena. NFTs are digital assets that signify one-of-a-kind items or information. In contrast to other digital tokens that are interchangeable, NFTs are unique, which makes them acceptable for recording the possession and authenticity of scientific data. In addition to assuring ethical utilization of data, NFTs can be implemented in a number of specific domains to improve the control and interaction of scientific resources. Basically, NFTs are going to be a way so that we can be able to account for fraud. We can hold people accountable. There won't be plagiarism as much. There won't be as much fraud. There won't be as much faulty data that's reported because we'll be able to see the ownership and be able to track the ownership and any alterations done to that data set over time, which previously has not been able to do in a public, open sourced and secure manner. We don't need to go over the capital distribution. I've gone over that in so many videos. Research on funding mechanisms and distribution models. Decentralized science is not limited to conventional funding and publication practices. Instead, it continuously investigates new methods of funding research and models for distributing results. These models utilize Web3 technology to ensure reliability, openness, and universal accessibility. In contrast, traditional science typically relies on a limited number of funding mechanisms and a peer review process that is frequently unfunded and primarily benefits commercial publishers. There's a very small amount of publishers who control all of it, getting paid to allow scientists to publish and then getting paid to allow universities to view the publications. Kind of crazy, right? They have no involvement at all, and yet they're taking money on both sides of it. Access to an ownership of intellectual property. So this is kind of where the NFTs really get their, their name carved into the space here. The fact that researchers retain control over the intellectual property, the IP, that they generate is one of the defining characteristics of this technology, of NFTs. They can give it away according to terms that are plainly stated, or they can keep it to themselves, which is in stark contrast to traditional science, in which organizations with researchers and employees usually claim possession of an intellectual property. So the results of a scientific study is often owned by the company that funded that, that research, not the people who were involved in the research like directly involved. This is completely getting flipped on its head during this model in which the people who actually put the blood, sweat, and tears into finding out the results are the ones who now own the results because there is no one centralized body which is funding all of it. It's a decentralized way to get funding. So now the person who's actually should own the IP gets to own the IP. Accessibility to this intellectual property might become simpler to understand in the conventional paradigm, leading to frequent disputes over usage rights. Integrating NFTs within decentralized science. The integration of NFTs into DeSci can result in significant advances in the following areas. 
Tracking Province and Ownership NFTs are essential for monitoring the ownership and province of scientific assets. Using blockchain technology, NFTs may offer an open and immutable history of proprietorship and origin, ensuring that the origins and modifications of each scientific work are transparently and undoubtedly documented. Holy crap. I did not expect to be able to read each and every one of those words in my first attempt, so shout out me there. Really, <laughs> NFTs create a tamper-evident record of who has both ownership and access to scientific information, thus decreasing the probability of fraud and duplication substantially. By preserving an open and reliable chain of province for every bit of data, NFTs can instill greater confidence in the methodology of science and guarantee that all inputs are appropriately credited. Increasing collaboration and information sharing, ensuring appropriate credit and accessibility rights is essential for preserving the integrity of the scientific process. You want to make sure that everyone who was involved in the research gets their name actually put on the document, actually put in the NFT on the blockchain from the beginning. And then anyone who adds to the research or gets discredited or their research gets to be proven otherwise, they can either get removed, but they're still there. You still get to see the history through the evolution of that research, of that IP. You still, to some capacity, like it's not all rainbows, it's not all just sunshine and excitement. You, there still is, to some capacity, trusting that the scientific team, the actual researchers, don't have bad blood amongst themselves and actually credit all of the people who are involved there, right? So there is still that one layer, but you're never really going to be able to get rid of that, or at least I can't see a way that you can get rid of that. So... Furthermore, collaboration and data exchange are frequently essential to scientific advancements. NFTs may speed up this procedure by providing a transparent and secure system that allows researchers to share data access. This encourages collaboration and improves the overall effectiveness of the study process. Using NFTs, researchers are able to buy, sell, and share data, creating an entire marketplace around data, which previously has not really been there. By establishing an online marketplace for information, NFTs can democratize ownership of important scientific data, thereby removing hurdles that could otherwise slow innovation and progress. Now, we got two real world use cases and then the author's final thoughts, but we'll replace his final thoughts with my final thoughts. This has been a fantastic article. I wish that it was not just done by the LCX team. I wish we could have seen exactly who was writing this because they deserve some credit in the form of an NFT. Dun, dun, dun. Real, real world use cases. Pfizer made history in February of this year, 2023, when I when it was the first medicine manufacturer to vote on a decentralized autonomous organization, a DAO, recommendations of the German blockchain organization, VitaDAO. Yes, you got that right. Pfizer actually invested into the treasury of VitaDAO and is voting on some of the operations that they're doing on. They're using the token as governance. This significant partnership emerged as a result of VitaDAO's disclosed late January fundraising efforts. Pfizer, again, invested right into them, which is why VitaDAO is doing so phenomenal because this is like the first iteration of VC blockchains, right? VitaDAO is kind of like Solana in the form of a VC pump and dump maybe we just haven't dumped yet not saying it necessarily is but that's a good example so, uh, solana got a lot of vc funding last bull market vitadao is starting to get some vc funding in the decentralized science realm molecule is another example of a decentralized biotechnology protocol observed in this technology uh, molecule we cite molecule in almost every single video it's a fantastic resource if you have not ever gone to its website you need to it seeks to completely change the biotech sector by developing a Web3 marketplace for intellectual property related to research. This marketplace facilitates the connection between academics and biotech organizations with financing in a quick and effortless manner, efficient manner. Moreover, it permits the client, the researcher, and the investment community to regulate and own research-related intellectual property. I would like to, in due time, 
buy some IP NFTs off of Molecule's website. Right now I'm using it to see what DAOs are funding what research. So I can see that Athena DAO just funded two places. I can see that Hair DAO just funded a research study. I can see that Valley DAO just funded a research study. And I can see that um, Vita DAO has funded a litany of research studies. So it's cool to see like what are the most active DAOs so that I can pay attention and potentially toss some money at them as well. I want to look at my YouTube videos here and just recommend you guys something if you have not seen this video already and you have further questions. Right here, the next big wave, IP NFTs explained for beginners. It's 16 minutes, but because time is your most valuable asset, I recommend listening to every YouTube video on 2x speed. And probably not, probably one and a half speed. And if you've never heard of an IP NFT before, maybe listen to it on 0.75 speed because you're gonna wanna take notes on this video. Trust me, it gets pretty confusing if, you, if this is the first time you've been exposed to it. But hopefully this video was worth investing into. I will see you guys in the next video.